Are you tired of the sterile smartwatch squares? If so, might I suggest you venture off with me to the world chock full of unique and classic timepieces that will actually stand the test of time. Let's get into it. Variety is an unheard of term in the smartwatch space, and that's because it's dominated by tech conglomerates like Apple, Xiaomi, Samsung, Google. And not to say that you don't have equivalent giant corporations in the traditional watch space. If I want to go buy a timepiece, I don't have to buy from Rolex, AP, Patek, Omega, just to get a good user experience, which can't be said for smartwatches. And if you're talking about the design, Smartwatches don't have very much variety. You're looking at a square watch or a circular watch, and there is no real ethos to a watch. If I hand you an Apple Watch Series 5 and an Apple Watch Series 9, and they're turned off, and I hand it over to a tech aficionado, it's highly unlikely that they would actually be able to tell me the difference between the two in terms of design. And when, when you're talking about ethos, if I tell you, if I ask you, what makes a Samsung Galaxy watch so different. If a tech enthusiast can't give me the ethos of this watch, the average person probably wouldn't be able to do it either. In the traditional watchmaking space, you also have different price points for different people. If you're looking, again, at the regular luxury watch segment, you have Rolex, AP, Patek, Omega, and if you want to splurge a bit more, you can uh, opt for watches such as Vacheron Constantin, FP Journe, MBNF. And if you want a middle of the road type watch that kind of does it all, you can go for a Tissot, a Seiko, a Longines. And if you really aren't willing to spend a whole bunch on a watch and you want to basically spend 30 bucks on a watch, $10 on a watch, you can opt for a Casio or a Timex. Even the Casios and the Timexes have their own ethos that differentiate them um, from every other watch. If I hand you a Seiko tank and a Cartier tank, the average person would be able to tell me the difference even if they couldn't from afar. There's an eclectic amount of functions within the traditional watch space. You have pilot watches, dress watches, GMTs, chronographs, digital watches, etc., etc. And even within these categories, you have quartz watches, automatic watches, mechanical watches. Um, those are just the different types of technology behind each watch. I don't want to wear a watch that is a one size fits all. And that's one of the reasons I think you should choose a traditional watch over a smartwatch. To summarize, smartwatches look like soulless metal slabs. <laughs> for, un for any of you who are unaware of what a mechanical watch or an automatic watch is, it just means that you power the watch. So it relies on movement, your kinetic energy to power, and the moment that you put it down or you stop winding it, it will die. I think that's one of the aspects of romance uh, in this watch hobby, where the watch is uh, the perfect mediation between um, machine and human. This machine relies on you to survive, almost akin to, dare I say, a pet that relies on your nurture to survive. Ever since I got my first smartphone, all I've ever heard is ding, 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 day in and day out. All these notifications from these people and these apps trying to get my attention, and sometimes I give in. It's so addicting. Don't even get me started on the nuisance that is charging. Every single night I have to plug my phone in, and if I don't, then I'm doomed for the next day. And throughout that day, I'm just constantly stressed out about uh, whether my phone's gonna die and I gotta run to the uh, outlet to basically salvage my phone. You know it would be absolutely horrendous? Having another one of those, but strapped onto my body that would notify me every single second of the day, 24 seven. What's that? Apple made a smartwatch. It's called the Apple Watch. Seems pretty cool, I'll buy it. Jokes aside, if you actually do need vacations, you need to be notified the moment you get sent something 
is it really that difficult to pull out your phone? Yes, I, I concur that if you lift your wrist, it is technically easier to see a notification than pulling your phone out. When you see a notification, you just passively look at it. Usually you want to respond or do something with that information. If you're on your Apple Watch or your smartwatch, you're just scrolling there on this little screen and imagine trying to respond on it. If I had a smartwatch, it was kind of a nightmare. I would just pull out my phone anyway. I think that actually wastes time and it makes it more inconvenient. The only caveat with that is just Smartwatches have these smart features such as uh, fitness tracking, which is the only reason I would concede and say, yes, you should probably get a smartwatch instead of a traditional watch. Even with digital watches like Garmin, sure, technically uh, you have similar fitness tracking, but I do realize that these smartwatches are more convenient for fitness tracking because you have apps that connect to them and they're just a little bit more user-friendly and thinner, lighter. Most people who use smartwatches uh, uh, that I know aren't using them for fitness reasons. They buy them and they go, hey, look, there's some fitness features, I'll, I'll use those. It's just become, for most people, a glorified notification device with, that has the time on it. Even though I wouldn't consider myself to be old, I guess it is a little bit old fashioned for me to appreciate the heritage of certain watches or just watches in general. But I think personally that anyone ranging from adolescents to the elderly can come to appreciate horology and horology just meaning the history of timekeeping, which obviously includes wristwatches. Again, you have people in this watch space, such as Louis Breguet, who made the first wristwatch, period. He made it for the Queen of Naples. And just to give you some context here, watches were originally a woman's only accessory. But during World War I, people realized that pocket watches weren't super convenient when you're out in battles. So men decided to kind of copy what women did and they had their own wrist watches. Those eventually became field watches, uh, pilot watches, etc. And you also have watches that, uh, traditional watches that center around pop culture. For example, you have the Speedmaster, which is famous for being the first watch to the moon, and eventually that became the moon swatch, and that's a whole other topic of discussion. You also have, for example, Rolex, just being one of the most coveted brands out there, and just a signifier of success and wealth. And you also have brands such as Seiko being the brains behind the quartz watch. There's just so much history in traditional watchmaking that you lack in smartwatches. And that's just one of the beauties of collecting watches. Unlike your smartwatch, for the most part, uh, in traditional watchmaking for mechanical watches and automatic watches, you don't have planned obsolescence. This term just means that a brand plans for your watch to become obsolete. It's such a prevalent term in the tech world because Tim Cook needs those bills. So with a smartwatch, it's just cheaper to buy another smartwatch when it slows down, when you break it. It's just a smart decision. And if you decide to give your Apple Watch to someone special, like your kid, they're gonna look at you and go, why'd you hand that to me? It's kind of old, it's slow, it doesn't mean very much to me, it's not working, there's no software updates. Whereas if you hand your special person, again, your kid, one of your timepieces, such as a Tissot, a Seiko, it's serviced, it's well kept, hopefully they would be very appreciative of the heirloom that you have given them and that's why it is an heirloom because if you take care of your watch your traditional watch you can basically have the same watch that spans your lifetime and a whole bunch of other lifetimes because traditional watches don't do a whole lot they kind of just tell time so it's kind of hard for them to go obsolete uh, and also another aspect of traditional watchmaking is that everything can be fixed and that's why you can have this watch that spans your lifetime because let's say, I don't know, you break a rotor, you can bring it to a watchmaker, support your local watchmakers, it's a dying craft, so you can replace your rotor and your watch will be up and running. Also, on top of this, you have patinaing. When something patinas, search this up to give you the original definition. So a green or brown film on the surface of bronze or similar materials produced by oxidation over long periods of time. So this is just one of the facets of this amazing watch community is that people love the process of aging. And this is a common motif throughout a whole bunch of different hobbies, such as collecting denim jeans. People love seeing things age. It's just 
it's such a dichotomy between these timepieces that will last a long time and get to see it age versus the world that we are enveloped by with a whole bunch of technology that you just kind of throw out and you never see age because aging in the tech world is not a good thing. And similar to that, I have to mention that I hope this watch channel patinas like your favorite watch. It, I just hope it gets better and better and uh, grows and matures. So make sure to uh, hit the like and subscribe button if you enjoyed this video. And if you have any comments down below, anything about this topic, any of your thoughts, I would love to hear your comments. I will try to respond to each and every one of your comments. Okay, time to find me a mainstream 10 to $30 smartwatch. Arrow 404, page not found. When it comes to traditional watchmaking, obviously your 10 to $30 watch is not, not gonna be anywhere near as good as your $30,000 watch. When it comes to smartwatches, the most expensive mainstream smartwatch is nowhere near the price of the most expensive mainstream traditional watch. But I can opt for a $10 to $30 Casio and still get a really good experience from a reputable brand and smartwatches can't say the same. Even though dressing casually is very popular right now with articles of clothing such as t-shirts, sweatshirts, sweatpants being very popular, you still need to go to those formal events that require you to elevate your sophistication in terms of your attire. Uh, this is where traditional watches come to play. Name me one smartwatch that won't look out of place with a suit and a tie. I'm pretty sure you can't. That is why uh, I would heavily recommend you buy a dress watch because most people don't wear watches and when they do wear a watch, they wear it on a dressy occasion. So buying a one high quality dress watch is actually a worthwhile investment. And this watch over here, it doesn't even have to be super expensive. This watch over here is $15 or so. I'll link it in the description below. Buying a dress watch is your do it all watch that I would recommend spending a little bit more on and these dress watches can't be replaced by a smartwatch. If you put a leather band on an Apple watch, it still won't be enough to match the occasion. Customizability. I don't know about you, but I like my accessories to exude my personality or at least prove that I'm not some sort of robot that chooses what everybody else chooses. So if you think about smartwatches and how you can tailor them to your style, you are extremely limited. So let's think of some ways you can uh, personalize your smartwatch. You can change the watch strap. You could also change the digital watch face. Anything else? Not really. But when it comes to traditional watches, you can change the watch strap, you can change the dial, you can change the hands, you can change the movement in some cases, you can do so much, you can change the crystal, etc., etc. You can basically go above and beyond, make your watch exude any sort of personality, any sort of ethos you want. You can make a Seiko watch look like a Rolex, you can make a Rolex look like a Seiko. You can make a Seiko look like a unicorn vomited out. Your options are completely limitless and unfortunately the same cannot be said for smartwatches. As per tradition, the last scene of this video is shot on these amazing wooden stairs. We're gonna go over the last category, which is craftsmanship and the hobby itself. Generally, this watch hobby is centered around the craftsmanship of traditional watches. Even when it comes to manu mass manufactured watches, that your watch has been designed with a specific consumer in mind, with a specific function in mind, and that certain watches will actually be sought after. Where the same cannot, again, once again, cannot be said about smartwatches. It's a one size fits all. They're not thinking about a specific consumer. It's just as many people as they can attract and the function is very broad and they're just trying to pack in as many functions as possible. There isn't really a goal, there's no guide, there's, there's no craftsmanship involved. There's no such thing as a handmade smartwatch, whereas when you go higher end on the traditional watchmaking ladder, all the different nuances of these watches were intentional when it comes to polishing, when it comes to brushing, guilloche, the dial, 
all of these different facets of a watch come together and basically make up this watch hobby that a lot of us are a part of. And I think that is one of the main reasons you sh should get a traditional watch. If you happen to fall in love with the traditional watch, you are obviously welcome to join this flourishing and amazing hobby full of very supportive people that you can probably talk to down in the comments below. And it's just an amazing community of people who obsess over the smallest things, but it's a lot of fun at the end of the day, just having a watch that's yours and being able to share it with the world. That will be all for today. Thanks for watching this episode. I truly appreciate it once again. Tell me in the comments below if you have any sort of constructive feedback. I would love to hear about it. Uh, any sort of suggestions for future videos. And uh, if you enjoyed, please hit that like and potentially subscribe. Make sure to check out the links in the description. And I'll see you on the next video of The Time Ticker. Bye.